I am Christelle from Diabetes Strong. In this video, I'm going to show you how to inject insulin. So it's going to be very practical. I'm going to show you how different injection techniques, depending on the length of the needle that you choose. But before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about insulin. Insulin is a hormone that everyone needs to stay alive. It helps transport the energy they consume. So everything you eat or drink into energy in the body, it transported from the bloodstream into your liver, into your fat and into your skeleton muscle cells. If you live with diabetes and you have little to no insulin production left, you will need to inject insulin and you will have to do that daily. I've been living with type one diabetes since 1997 and have had to manage my blood sugars with insulin injections since the day of my diagnosis. There's no cure for diabetes, uh, so we have to manage with insulin. And I've found that with the right technique, and I'm gonna show you the technique, and the right length of needle, I'll link to that up here, insulin injections do not have to be painful, and they can be something that becomes a routine and something that doesn't stand in the way of you living your life. Now I'm gonna show you how to do an injection using a shorter needle, so that's a 45 millimeter needle. I'm gonna be using this pen needle, that is four millimeter, I'll just show you the box, looks like this. Uh, these are the ones I usually use. So what you need is, you'll need your insulin pen, so this is a pre-filled pen, meaning the insulin's already in here. Same deal for um, durable pens, but you need your pen, you need a needle, and you need an alcohol swab. So first things first is you wanna clean your skin. Since this is a shorter needle, I can do it one-handed. So I'm gonna show you the injection on my arm. So here we go, I'm gonna clean the skin first, okay? And let that dry while I prep the pen. You wanna get your pen, you wanna get your needle, okay? So take off the cap of your insulin pen. So right now there's no way of injecting this insulin because there's no needle on it. So you wanna take your needle, pull off the outer cap. That's not really a cap, the protection shield here. Okay, so that is off. And now you can screw this uh, pen needle onto the pen. So simply just, there you go, screw it on. There you are. So now you wanna remove the outer cap. See, there's an inner cap on there, so I can't poke myself yet. So <laughs> still be careful, right? So once you take off the inner cap, here you go, you can see the needle. You see it's tiny, it's only four millimeter long. Next step is you wanna do an air shock. We do that to make sure that insulin is flowing and that you're not, well, injecting air. So you wanna dial it up to two. Hear that, one, two. You can also see it in the little window here. Um, you might wanna, some people do less than two. Two is the recommended. So you wanna do a few clicks to get any air bubbles up to the top so that we can get those out of the pen. See it here. That's what an air shot looks like. So usually I do it into a napkin, now I have to clean up. Next step is you wanna dial up to how many units you need. Say that I need four. I'm not actually gonna inject this because I don't need four units right now. But I'm gonna show you because this doesn't hurt. So we clean the skin. Again, this is a shorter needle so we can get away with a 90 degree angle. So that means simply the needle goes directly in. You don't need to do a skin fold. Again, because it's a shorter needle. So what you wanna do is choose a place on your body. It doesn't have to be the arm. Um, I'll walk through which placements are good later on in this video, but you simply hold it up against the skin and then I need to look. There you go. See right now, and you saw that didn't hurt. I just pushed in the needle. I'm holding in the needle right now at a 90 degree angle. So then you simply push the plunger. You don't have to push the pen into the arm. You only want to push the plunger, hold that all, push that all the way in. Just imagine that I pushed it in, okay? Then you want to hold it like this for another five to 10 seconds. So you simply count one and two and three, four and five. The reason why we do this is to make sure that there is no leakage, meaning that the insulin actually stays in the tissue rather than just come flowing out. Okay, so we're actually done with the injection now. So next, the needle is still on, so we wanna get that off. So be careful that you don't poke yourself on the needle. 
but simple ways of disposing of the needle. You can screw it off and put it in a straps container, or you can use something like a BD needle cutter. So this is like a tiny sharps container. What you do is that you simply put the needle in, click, and you just cut off the needle. Then you just screw it off. There you go. Put back the cap and store it until the next time you need to take an insulin injection. And that's how you do a one-handed injection with a 90 degree angle using a shorter needle. Now I'll show you how to do an insulin injection using a longer needle. So that's any needle six millimeter or longer. I'll be using this syringe. See the box here. This one is eight millimeters long. Given it has the length that it has, it's a longer needle. I can't do a one handed 90 degree angle. We would have to do a skin fold or a 45 degree angle. So instead of 90, then a 45 degree angle. I'm going to do both um, and I'm going to show you how to do that on the stomach. This means I have to move around a little bit here. To do an insulin injection using a syringe, you'll need your syringe, you'll need a vial of insulin and you'll need an alcohol swab. The alcohol swab is for cleaning the skin. So that's what you want to start doing. Um, so clean that place on the skin where you want to inject it, giving us a longer needle. Remember, you need to be able to use two hands. And this is regardless of whether or not it's a wrench or a pre-filled pen where you screw on a needle. Okay. So first things first, let me show you the syringe. You take off the end here. It exposes the plunger. Don't push it. Next thing you want to take off the protection cap. Now the needle is exposed. So be careful that you don't poke yourself on it. So I don't have a vial of insulin because I use pre-filled pens. So you have to imagine, <laughs> imagine a vial of insulin. So what you want to do is you want to put the needle. So only the needle part into the syringe through the little rubber seal. Okay, and you want to then flip it upside down. So I'm holding this wrench here. Okay, so what you want to do now is that you want to, let me just hold this right. So you're holding it like this, right? So what you want to do is you want to push a little bit of air into the, into the valve. Okay, we do that because it, make, it makes it easier to pull out the insulin. So you push that in. Okay, so now a little bit of air is going to rise to the top of our vial and then you're going to pull out how many ever units you need. See, I'm pulling with these fingers down here. That pulls down the plunger. And see, now I have the equivalent of five units in my syringe. It's a little hard to see, but there's indications of how many units there are. And I'm now ready to do the injection. So let me just show you. And I'm gonna show you on my belly. So I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna cut my head off, but that's okay. So imagine I already used the alcohol swap to clean the skin. So this is clean. Then I want to pinch a little bit of skin here. You don't want to take too much, but you don't want to get the muscle, but you want to pinch the skin a little bit. And then is that you don't want to go straight in with needle. You want to go in an angle. Okay. 45 degree angle. And if it's not exactly 45, that'll be fine. But you can see here, you ready? And I simply just push the needle in. See now the needle is in the skin. A little hard to see the 45 degree angle because it's not like that. It's a little tilted, right? And then you simply hold on to the, push the plunger all the way down. I'm not going to push it down because there's air in here, but assuming there's insulin, you simply push the plunger all the way down. Once it's all the way down, the insulin dose has been delivered. However, we still want to hold it in for five to 10 seconds longer. So we do a one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The reason for this is to make sure that there's no leakage. You can also pull the needle halfway out. So now it's halfway out and you can do the count. Okay, once you're done, pull out completely. No blood, no nothing. And the insulin injection is done. Now, however, you have a syringe with a needle on it. So you need to dispose of that and it should not go in the trash. It should not go in the recycle. So you can either put it in a store-bought or a homemade sharps container, or you can use this. It's a BD needle cutter, and it's basically a tiny sharps container. It has a little hole up here. Simply put in your needle, press it, voila, 
the noodle is gone and you can now dispose of this in the trash. And that is how you do a 45 degree angle skin fold injection using a longer needle. There are a few things to keep in mind when it comes to insulin injections. First is that the insulin should be injected into the fatty tissue right beneath your skin. So think about it like this. There's the skin, then there's fatty tissue, and then there's muscle. The insulin should go into the fatty tissue, and that's if you use the right injection technique is where it should end up. If you inject directly into the muscle instead, for example, if you pinch too much of the skin, or if you don't use an angled um, injection technique with a longer needle, you might inject into the muscle tissue. If you do that, there is a risk of the insulin being absorbed faster, which potentially can lead to a low blood sugar. There are a few places where you can inject insulin. So let me just show you a visual here. I kind of like that one. So the place that most people use is the belly area. You can use that. Just stay clear of the belly button around two inches around it. Other good places, in my opinion, is the back of your arms. I really like that position. If you use a shorter needle, you can do that. You don't have to pinch the skin. Uh, there's also lower back and glutes, thighs. So as you can see, there are plenty of places to choose from so that you can rotate your injection sites. Let's finish up with a few tips on insulin injections. First one is choose the needle that's right for you. So I linked a video before I link to that again on needle sizes, and that's both for pin needles and syringes, but just know that for most people, using a shorter needle will be ideal. Second, remember, insulin doesn't start to work right away. So if you use a mealtime insulin like a Novolog or Humalog, remember that once you inject the insulin, it actually takes it up to 15 minutes or more for it to hit your bloodstream. That means it doesn't start to work in your body until 15 minutes after it's injected. And it doesn't peak, meaning it's not at its most intense, let's say that, until an hour after you injected it. And finally, it will stay in your body for three to five hours. So if you're having a low blood sugar, let's say four hours after you injected your mealtime insulin, it might have been too high of a dose. And finally, rotate your insulin injection sites. We do that to preserve good insulin absorption, as well as to reduce the risk of developing lumps. I'll leave a video on how to do that up here. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more, please click the subscribe button and you'll follow the Diabetes Strong channel. Also, appreciate any interactions, whether or not that's likes or comments. Thank you so much for watching.